welcome techies we are going to be converting this to this and at the end of the video you'll be able to make that even better to something like this so stick to the end and all through the process feel free to pause the video at any point in time and let's get started the first you want to do as usual is import sekinta and then create a base window object you will add a title up here and give it a text of countdown timer now let's run a app and you should get something like this when you run it the first thing we'll do is build the ui so with this image as a reference we're going to start by building a frame that is going to hold the minutes hour and second entries now we'll create a frame to hold the hours input and label text next we'll create a label to hold a text of that will be containing a colon then after that now let's create a minutes frame to hold the minutes text label and then the mini entry next up we're going to create another label to hold the colon and then we're going to create another frame to hold the seconds label text which will say seconds and then the entry box so if that's fast make sure you can pause along the way to make sure you type that out so that's all set and done now let's move on to creating our buttons we're going to start by creating a frame to hold both the start button actually i wanted us to create a start button and a stop button but for now we're going to start with just the start button now we're going to put only the start button in there now let me show you this demo on a particular feature of, of this countdown timer you notice that whenever we over on our start button and an input in any of the entry boxes is invalid it will automatically be resetted be reset to the default value which is zero now the same thing applies to let's say you are typing on an entry box if you leave that entry box to another entry box and the value that is inside the entry box you left is invalid which our program will also automatically reset that value to the default value which is going to be zero so we're going to try to implement that right now so we'll create a function called reset entries and then it's going to take in an argument called events because we're going to be passing it as a callback function okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to extract our hours minutes and seconds from the get time inputs function which we'll create now so in this function basically what we'll be doing is we're going to return a tuple containing our hours input being stripped so let's do that for both the hours minutes and then the seconds input and then it's going to return those values that's what the get image function will do so inside there what we want to do is we want to make sure before we go ahead to reset the input has to be correct right so we're going to do that if ours is an empty string or if it's not a number then under the condition we're going to say hours input dot delete so whenever you use this method you need to pass in where you want to start deleting from so we want to start deleting from the first element in the entry box which is at index of zero so all to the end so that'll be comma and then end in code that's how that works and then when we delete that we want to make sure we add our default value of zero back to it now we're going to do the same thing for the minutes and the seconds input to make sure it works fine we're going to do something a bit different we would not be using a callback instead we're going to do what we call binding binding is just what allows us to assign events to functions so in this case whenever you over on a button that's an example of an event so it's going to bind that event to calling our function the reset entries function that's how binding works in taking that so we're going to do that to our hours input minutes input seconds input and then the start button we're going to be binding different events to our reset entries yeah different kind of event so for our hours input the event we want to add here is whenever we focus out so this means that if you are currently typing on that entry box and immediately you leave the entry box to do something else it's automatically trigger that function our reset entries function we're going to do the same thing for the minutes and the seconds input now for the start button it's not going to be focus out events 
it's going to be the entire event, which means whenever you enter a button, basically meaning hovering over a button. So now let's try that out. Now that it works, we're going to create the timer UI to show the countdown. So whenever we click on our start button, once a new window popped up, which will start the timer immediately. And after the timer ends, we're going to have a sound being played at the end. So that's let's get into that. We'll create a function called start timer. Here we're going, also going to extract our hours, minutes, and seconds input. But when we extract them, we're going to make sure we convert them to integers. Say you have something like zero, 00. It's going to be converted to just 0. And of course, the entry boxes return string by default. So we want to, also, we want to make sure we also convert those to integers. Now, I'm going to use the div mod method. What this does for us is, instead of having to do division separately and then the modular operator separately, it combines them together for us and then gives us the answer which we can extract so say you have by default the user shouldn't be able to enter more than 60 seconds right so what we want to do is if they enter let's say they enter 70 seconds what this will do is div mod is going to divide 70 by 60 and that would be one so which is one minute and then remainder 10 which will be 10 seconds so what this will do is we're going to assign that one to the m and then we're going to assign the 10 seconds to 10. So that will be the amount of seconds we actually need. And then the one minute extra, actually it's not extra, but then the one minute, we're going to add it to the total number of minutes. This way, the user cannot, can never enter more than, actually they can enter more than 60 seconds, but it will always be converted to minutes. Okay, okay, just calm down. I know that's a bit of math for those of you who don't do math, so don't like math. So basically, you don't need to worry about that. We're going to see how it works. Now, next we're going to do is we want to create a pop-up and then we're going to do this with um, a Tinkleter widget called the top level window. And then we're going to make it non-resizable. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to create a base frame which will hold our countdown. Now, we're going to create a label. This label is going to hold all the countdown inputs at once. Now, to the interesting part. But hold on, before you go there, let's see what this looks like. And That is good. Now, to be able to implement this countdown, we're going to use a while loop. Yeah. So the way the while loop is going to work is we're going to have while our hours is not zero, or minutes is not zero, or seconds is not zero, which means as long as we have numbers to count down on, then right inside it, what we're going to do is we're going to say if our minutes is equal to zero and our hours is greater than zero. So let's say we've run out of minutes. Before we stop the countdown, we want to check if we still have hours. And then if you have hours left, the work, what we're going to do is we're going to add 60 minutes to the total number of minutes, which will be zero at this point. And then we're going to minus one from the hours to make up for that. Now, let's say our hours is also zero. If our seconds is equal to zero, or if our minutes is also greater than zero, we're going to do the same thing, add 60 seconds, and then subtract one for the minutes to make up for that. So at the end of that, we want to make sure we sleep for one second with the time we do. Let's make sure we import, import that. And then we're going to sleep for one second, then subtract one from the seconds. After we subtract one, we're going to update our time label. And then 
that the rope is going to keep running so it will be run out of numbers and after we run out of numbers we want to change we want to change our time level to say time up and then we're going to destroy the top level window or widget now the thing with this is if we should run it this way our program is just going to say time up so fast that we might not even see the time up and program is going to end so that's one issue we need to deal with and we can deal with that by either saying time goes sleep immediately we update that time level to say time up or we're going to what we are actually going to do is we're going to play a sound and that sound is also going to stop the program for a while till the sound ends or finishes playing so now let's import the play sound module but before we do that we have to make sure we install it so if you don't have that installed already go to your terminal or command prompt and type pip install play sound or pip3 install play sound if that doesn't work try any of these commands on the screen and if you have issues with that make sure you comment down so we can see how we can resolve that together or anyone in the comment can also help you out okay so let's get back to the program i have my sound in a directory already but for you i'm going to leave a link in the description below to where you can get this sound but you can download this sound anywhere online okay so i have it in the builds directory so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do dot slash builds to access that directory and then i'm going to put the name of the audio file but if you have that file in the same folder or directory with your program file you don't need to do this all you need to do is just type the name of the file the audio file which is alarm in my own case dot mp3 or whatever the extension of your audio is and then that should work now let's run our app to see if that works As you can see, the program just freezes. Then when the timer ends, it closes the top level widget, which is not what we want. So the reason for this for this is a while loop blocks the event loop or the main loop to make it easy. So that's why you run at the bottom of the file. So whenever you run a while loop, that blocks the main loop, which also blocks the execution of any other part of the app, even though it might be running. So the loop is actually running. But it's just that the loop itself blocks us from seeing the top level widget now we can fix this in different ways you can break whatever tags is blocking the main loop for example and then put them into different sub tags and use a special method which comes with the top level widget which is the after but that wouldn't work in work well in this case i haven't tried that we can also use trading which is the solution we are going to be referring to here so for the remaining part of the video i'm going to switch back to the style i was using with before and then we're just going to go through the whole process and then I'll explain a few things to you and we end the video. I hope if you enjoyed this style, make sure you comment down and let me know what you think about it. All right. Okay, guys, welcome back. So um, I have my terminal open here. Then I'm going to run high turn to make sure our app works fine. Then I'm going to put three seconds here. Yeah, so after three seconds, we get the audio, but then we don't get the top level widget. And just like that, just like I said, we're gonna use trading to fix the issue. So we're gonna create a new thread. Okay, of course we need to import the trading module. So we're gonna do import trading. So we're gonna do trading dot create a thread. Now we're gonna give this thread a function. The function we want to call on a different thread i'm going to call that start timer function all right okay and then we're going to say t dot start so whenever we call this function it starts automatically down here we're going to change the start timer ui instead and that should fix the issue yes of course let me run this now three seconds here three two one that's perfect Okay, so that's too loud. That's why I had to cancel it. I could this is I could reduce the volume instead. Okay. Now this let me quickly show you some pictures. Oh. So I think I deleted them already. Just some pictures to illustrate how the callback loop works. So I'm gonna look if I look for it now, you're gonna see it on your screen right now. If I could find it. So it just shows how 
the main loop is blocked whenever you have a callback function that has a while loop that takes too long which causes our app to freeze and then in the when the while loop in this case is done it's going to return execution back to our main loop and so in the case of this thread what we are just doing is we're going to create another thread which is going to be running while our app is also running so we get to see our top level window um i'm going to find i hope you guys saw the pictures which means i found it okay now this another thing now if you run this app python c timer if you run this app and let's say we give it three seconds okay i'm going to start that now if you as you notice when i close that window the timer doesn't stop immediately and which means our thread keeps running which we which is something we don't want we don't just want threads to, um, later than around in our systems process okay so what we're going to do now is we're going to add an option to this here called daemon not daemon daemon and then we're going to set it to true so what this does is whenever we close our main program our thread closes automatically so now if i run this and give this three seconds here okay then if i close the program the thread also closes so that works that's, that's fine so we also make it look like the most beautiful version i showed you at the beginning all you need to do is to use custom ticking tap so this is the same app we just worked on right now if i run this um, let me give it a second here all right now to make it look exactly the same way it looks on the thumbnail all we need to do is install custom thinking tar okay and i have it installed already or well, if you have it installed you'll be seeing something different from this and if that does if you have any issue with this just comment in this comment section below we'll find a solution to it and okay so when you install it now instead of important thing that we're changing that to cost up thinking that okay i'm going to import it as ctk now what i did was make changes to all my widgets so instead of having tk dot ctk sorry instead of having tk dot tk it's going to be ctk dot ctk so all my widgets usually have ctk behind them so for example um the top level widget now instead of ct instead of top level it's not ctk top level same thing with the frame widget, all the frame widget, all the label widgets. And I'm, I I changed most of, I think I changed all my widgets here. So the label, frame, I actually changed everything. Okay. So, and the beautiful thing about custom thing that is that it works with TK fine. So I can decide to still use some TK widgets in here. So that's how it works. Now let's test this. I'm going to open my terminal here. Okay. All right. Let me drag this in. And I'm going to do Python ct kc timer the pi so the link to this code is going to be in the comment section in the description section um, section rather and if you run this yeah so it works the exact same way if i put two seconds here we have this yeah okay so that's it um thanks for watching if you enjoyed it then give us the thumbs up um also subscribe and i'll see you next time peace